Hello, everyone. Mm, according to, to some studies, the typical image of a scientist people have in their minds uh, is a person with glasses and in white laboratory coat. <laughs> and you, you guessed, I'm a scientist, but this outfit is not the only thing, uh, not, not the only difference between you and me. I ha <laughs> 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 All right. Um, I have a doctoral degree, which means I can receive research funding for uh, uh, research funding um, for which you are not eligible to apply. Uh, I have an academic affiliation, which means that I can access um, scientific literature for which you would need to pay between 10 and 50 US dollars per article. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Mm. <laughs> and uh, the last thing is that uh, my research area is uh, in basic science. I can relate to your work in one way or another, understand it, appreciate it, uh, but it's not going to work vice versa. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I hoped you th uh, your first thought would be, what the hell, is, uh, the science is a bloody ivory tower. Uh, but what if? Uh, what if I explain in simple words what is my research area? What if I uh, point you to additional information so you could learn more and understand the topic I'm working on? Uh, what if uh, I make sure you have access to all relevant literature for free? What if I make sure you have access to all the data so you can play with it on your own? Uh, what if I take off this laboratory code so there's one artificial difference less between you and me? What if uh, the only thing that matter in this game of solving nature's mysteries uh, are skills, knowledge, and passion? Uh, we have a name for that utopian vision. It's called open science. Oh, thank you. And uh, you might think that uh, Mm, this vision is not going to become a, a reality anytime soon, but the, the truth is that science slowly but steadily is shifting toward openness. And it doesn't happen without a reason. The reason is fluid of information. Information, knowledge, data, content. Uh, the current system is not very efficient in general, uh, but it fails completely when facing the current stream of, uh, of data. And uh, we needed some change. We didn't need an optimization. Uh, we needed a paradigm shift. And it came from the internet. Internet as a content delivery platform provided us with uh, ways, ideas, uh, how to give people better access to digital content. And also, internet as an application platform provided us with ways and tools so we can communicate better and collaborate more efficiently. Uh, out of these two, the first comes openness. And we are trying to push openness in science in many different ways. Uh, the biggest effort goes toward open access. Uh, and open means more than free. Uh, you are not only free to read the scientific article, but also to reuse it, remix it, analyze with the computer software, and share results back to the community. Uh, we are trying to make sure you have access to all uh, all, the, all the data as well. In my area, I'm a biologist, uh, uh, it happens on surprisingly large scale. Even pharmaceutical companies are starting to share their data. Uh, but if I were to mention the single thing that will have the, long, the biggest long-term impact on science, that would be so-called open notebook science. Uh, this was invented by Jean-Claude Bradley in 2006. He's a chemist from US working on drug against malaria. In 2006, he started to share his laboratory notebooks uh, online for everybody to see, including his competition. Uh, this is not only a combination of uh, open access and open data, but it has also the third very important attribute. This is real-time access. Uh, why, is the, uh, why this is important? Um, in life sciences, especially in life sciences, uh, in hot areas, uh, there is a gap between the experiment is, uh, is done 
and uh, the experiment is published. And because of this gap, uh, 10, 20, 50 different groups all over the world are repeating exactly the same experiment in, the, in exactly the same condition. If we can uh, make sure that all uh, experiments that are, that are done today uh, are reported almost immediately on the, uh, on the internet, we will save enormous amount of resources and, and enormous amount of, uh, of money. And we are trying to, to, to make the science as, uh, as open as possible without, uh, uh, because uh, you know that very well, that openness uh, invites, not only enables, but invites other people, uh, uh, those of you who have strong online pres presence, you, kn uh, you know that very well, that if you share your experience, your idea, problem, solution, uh, not always, but often, you will meet, you will face some reaction, disagreement, praise, uh, solution, willingness to join or willingness to help. This does happen in science as well. And probably some of you remember uh, this cool screensaver from the project called SETI at Home. Uh, in idle time of your computer, uh, the screensaver was analyzing data from radio telescope in search for extraterrestrial civilizations. I would rather mention the other project from my area, which is trying to solve, uh, to attack a problem significantly less important, uh, but also very difficult. Uh, the screensaver from Folding at Home uh, runs a small piece of a very giant simulation of a protein uh, collapsing from extended st uh, state into compact three-dimensional stable structure. Uh, understanding this process uh, is very important for, for the reasons that uh, I, uh, I don't have time to explain. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, and currently this project is uh, focusing the efforts on proteins related to the diseases, such, such as Alzheimer's. And uh, important question, an important uh, pr uh, problem, very low entry barrier, and as a result, uh, you have a computing power that's, that's among the biggest in the world, and the huge scientific output. Uh, but if this at-home project uh, running screensaver feels a, a bit passive to you, uh, that's not a problem. If you want to be more engaged and you are interested in paleontology, you can join uh, Open Dinosaur Project. Uh, in this project, you are, uh, people are uh, collecting and ana analyzing data uh, concerning uh, dinosaurs' bone measurements. Uh, the goal is to understand the, uh, the evolution of these giant reptiles. Uh, in this project, you are not only contributing the data, but you are uh, welcome to participate in the discussion, have your own opinion, uh, and it doesn't really matter what's your uh, background, uh, as long as, your, as the ideas are good. Uh, and I would like to mention one more project, uh, one, one more uh, large-scale scientific collaboration. It's called uh, Polymath Project. Uh, this is a series of projects in which people are trying to solve hard mathematical problems. Uh, the first polymath project attracted 27 people, which might seem to you a bit low, uh, but you, if, you, if you think that, if you consider the fact that uh, the topic puts a very high requirements on the participants, and also if you, if, if you think about the, the fact that mathematicians for years or for ages were working entirely alone, uh, 27 is a huge number in mathematics. <laughs> uh, also, the, it took 37 days to solve the problem in case of uh, first polymath project, which is another record. Uh, Currently, they are uh, uh, working on the fifth, project, uh, fifth problem in a row. Four uh, were all already solved. Uh, but uh, it's very easy to talk about these large-scale collaborations, but uh, if you look at this plot, it it's roughly represents uh, the size of a team versus the number of teams uh, team of certain size. In other words, there's uh, quite few 
projects uh, which uh, collect, attract a large number of people, and the large number of projects which, uh, which are concerning only very few, maybe two. Uh, the small things matter. And uh, I will show you an example. Uh, this is a protein called potassium channel. Uh, this is quite important protein. Uh, for example, a scorpion's toxin contains another protein which blocks this one. And uh, as, as it is widely known, being bitten by a scorpion isn't particularly a healthy experience. Uh, one day, Cameron Nalon, who is a chemist from UK, uh, ask openly on FriendFeed, which is a uh, platform for aggregating online activity, uh, for help. Uh, he wanted somebody to build a model of such protein for him. I was around, I had necessary skills, I did it. Okay, and this uh, scientific collaboration between two people started. And uh, the very common perception of, uh, of that col collaboration is that two icons of a, scient uh, of a scientist started to work together without apparent reason. Uh, even we sci scientists think about ourselves in a similar manner. Uh, we think about ourselves uh, as uh, soulless, emotionless robots producing paper after paper. Uh, and that might be true in typical academic environment, uh, but it's not, this is not the case uh, in, uh, in online science. Uh, online science has a human face. Uh, the only, uh, well, I wasn't particularly thrilled by uh, the scientific question Cameron was trying to answer. I am not passionate about uh, potassium channels either. Uh, there were no money involved, which is kind of usual for online collab uh, collaboration. And we wish it were, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. And uh, the only reason I was doing the model uh, on my laptop uh, with my wife standing over my shoulder and saying, honey, we should be leaving now, uh, was uh, that Cameron was a part of my online circle of friends. This is not a network, this is a circle of friends. Uh, it's a bit more, maybe not a friendship, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know this team, it uh, there are few people referring to, uh, to that uh, through this conference today. Uh, be nice, help people. I don't know what about you, I didn't expect that uh, scientific progress depends on being nice to other people. Uh, and. Uh, what really happens in case of open, uh, uh, open science, uh, we are inviting other people to, uh, to join us. We are lowering the barriers of, uh, of, uh, of entry. And you might expect that uh, the main outcome uh, would be that the scientific progress is just is going to explode. If you have a larger number of people uh, collaborating and doing science, uh, this is what w uh, would happen. But I think um, what really is going to happen that uh, if two things uh, meet together, the hyperconnectivity and openness, uh, this th uh, these two things uh, coming together will empower people to the scale that wasn't uh, available uh, previously. Thank you. We could talk about this for a very long time, and I'd love to ask uh, several questions, and I will later, because we are unfortunately... Out of time. Sure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.